Hey everyone, this is Marley here with Duke Schnauzers in Middle Tennessee and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining, welcome. Michelle and I are so happy to have you. And if you love Schnauzers, I would definitely suggest that you hit that subscribe button because I will be uploading content for you guys all the time in addition to super cute videos of my puppies and all the fun stuff that we get to do. Um, so I'll first introduce Michelle because she's adorable. This is Michelle. She is a red shaded sable party. She has some ticking, those little tiny spots on her back. So I'll get those all over her body. She is my last puppy available this summer. Can you believe it? I won't have any more puppies available to go home until September. So she is a doll. She's listed on my website and we're just hanging out. Um, but today I wanted to talk to you guys, not so much about Michelle, she's just my little cuddle buddy, but about the nutritional needs of miniature schnauzers and kind of carry on the conversations that we've been having. So if you followed my channel, watched any of my videos, or know anything about kind of how schnauzers do with fat, you know that miniature schnauzers don't tolerate a lot of fat in their diet. It can cause a ton of problems more than just your run of the mill, diarrhea and vomiting. Um, it actually can cause the miniature schnauzers, if they have too much fat in their diet, it causes them to develop liver congestion, they can develop pancreatitis, they can develop eye issues, it can be fatal, okay? Dogs are really good at hiding when they're sick, so that's why it's so important that we make sure that we're feeding our bearded buddies the best diet for them. And just because miniature schnauzers, because they are the way they are, their blood is very attracted to that, those fat cells and they will hold on to it and they won't do good things with it. So our program, we originally started feeding our dogs when we started breeding schnauzers Purina. We did okay with it. The dogs were fine with it. Um, I did not have any dog that had any liver congestion, pancreatitis, nothing like that. We moved to Tennessee. I found our new fabulous vet at VCA and she specializes in schnauzers and her and I got to chatting and that is how this um, passion about improving the health of my schnauzers kind of started was that I learned about how miniature schnauzers really needed this low fat diet from Dr. Delfs at VCA and it just makes so much sense to me and then it was right when that happened is when my oldest miniature schnauzer who's about 10 years old developed liver congestion. So kind of like that precursor to pancreatitis. And really we had no idea she wasn't feeling good. But once we got her on the proper diet, which is now um, a prescribed low fat diet, and she's on a medication that she'll have to be on the rest of her life in addition to a supplement, we, it was like night and day difference with this dog. So it's super, super important guys. I've been doing this for a while. I have heard Unfortunately, so many stories from people who've had schnauzers in the past and have lost them to pancreatitis or complications from it. So it's really important. So we went from Purina, met with Dr. Delfs when we moved here and then really got interested into Royal Canin. Royal Canin makes a brand specifically, or formula I should say, specifically for miniature schnauzers. Got it, take it, I'm here for that all day long, right? And what does it have? a low fat content. The low, the fat content in the Royal Canin Miniature Schnauzer formula is 10%. That's like 1% higher than my girl's prescription diet. So I said, okay, let's do it. So we did it. And for a while, it worked pretty good. I didn't notice a ton of a difference in my dog's coats. That's usually the first place that I notice it is their coats. It's bad. Welcome to my life. Um, their coats will be a little more supple, shiny. Um, they won't have flaky skin. I noticed a little bit of a change, but I just thought, let's just give it some more time um, and continue feeding them that. I did notice that some of my younger dogs who were just transitioned from puppy food to the Royal Canin weren't really gaining enough weight. And to give them the volume to get them to gain weight was really hard, but we stuck with it. Um, then from there, I decided we were going through a massive shortage of Royal Canin. Went back to my doctor, to Dr. Delfs, and was like, look, Purina Pro Plan worked okay for us before. They have a weight management um, formula that actually has all these, you know, added vitamins and minerals to it. Um, do you think this would be a good option? And the fat content of that is 9 to 13%. It's like they give a, a range with that one. She thought it was a great option. We switched the dogs to that. Um, and it, 
Ironically, during this time, I was hearing from a lot of puppy buyers that they were having difficulty with their Royal Canin as well. Either their dog wasn't liking it, um, their dog wasn't gaining enough weight, just everybody was having problems. Plus it was really hard to find. And there literally is a Royal Canin factory, like maybe 20 miles from me, if that. So, and I was driving all around like middle Tennessee trying to find Royal Canin. So we switched to the Purina, Pro, the Purina Pro Plan for both our puppies and our adults. And they liked it. They ate it much more readily. I did notice a difference in their coat. So I can tell that there was the added um, vitamins in it that were really um, nourishing their coats and their skin. I'm sorry, it's so loud, but this is what it's gonna be um, at all times. So, um, but I was still having an issue with pups that were, you know, were too young, too old for puppy food, but too, you know, too old for puppy food, but too, young for adult food, there it is. Um, they still weren't gaining as much weight as I wanted them to gain. And so that made me take another step back and went back to my veterinarian and I said, you know what, I'm gonna look at this further. So then I really became turned on to Blue Buffalo. And I originally was not a Blue Buffalo fan when Blue Buffalo came out for a lot of reasons, another story for another day. Um, and I looked not just at the breakdown the nutritional you know analysis of this and the blue buffalo has um i'm looking i have notes don't don't mind me um has 14 percent fat in it so higher fat than royal canaan but i kind of think that's okay and let me tell you why and 24 percent protein now what i love about the blue buffalo is not so much the i mean i think the nutritional breakdown is great um how like the percentiles of what the dogs are getting but it's what's in it okay let me tell you something else royal canaan changed their formula and i honestly think this is why my dogs turned their nose up to it why other people's dogs turned their nose up to it and they change from what i can see they looks like they changed their ingredients they have so much more fillers they have wheat in it they have by, like they've always had byproduct, but they just got all this crap in it that I do not want my dogs eating. Now, Blue Buffalo, if you look at Blue Buffalo, the first ingredient is deboned chicken. There is no coin, there's no corn, there's no soy, there's no wheat, there's none of those other fillers. It's literally like deboned chicken, chicken meal, rice. And then we go down and it also has all of these, like it's like an antioxidant plant. And plus it has vitamin E, vitamin D, vitamin B, you know, so they're going to have their coat nourished. Vitamin B is great. Vitamin D is so good for them. Has the calcium to help to activate that vitamin D. So that is what really, really got me excited about it. Because I think there's a lot to be said about what a biologically appropriate diet is for canines. Um, and there's a lot of good information on the web about, about this, about how much we're feeding these dogs that they don't actually need, need that they weren't meant to eat. Now, I'm still not in the camp of saying, okay, yes, dogs were only made to eat meat, so let's not give them any grain, because I still strongly believe and follow the research that grain-free diets can lead to dilated cardiomyopathy in certain breeds. And until the research gets there, I'm not gonna say grain-free, but I do like how much more friendly to the dogs the um, blue buffalo seems to be. So because of that, we have switched. And it's been, I would say, like two months. We switched to blue buffalo. Our last litter that went home about one and a half, two weeks ago, they were weaned to blue buffalo. They did great. They had no flaky skin. I really see it in the puppies the most, honestly. Um, if mama's diet is not nurturing her coat the way it's supposed to, her puppies are going to have like a cradle cap flaky skin and it goes away, but it's still just like, I don't like it. Okay. So our dogs have been on blue buffalo, the chicken and rice formula and the puppies, they've been on the puppy chicken and rice and so great. Um, it's been a really good switch for them. And I've been telling everybody who reaches out to me and also Arlo. So Arlo was one of my boys who, like I couldn't get this dog above 12 pounds and he was just looked a little too thin for me. He is now 
15 pounds, okay? And all we're doing is feeding him exactly how much he's supposed to get the blue, the blue buffalo. And it's just been really great. The dogs love it. It has other great things in the antioxidant blend like blueberries, cranberries, all these are so good for dogs. And um, we're really happy with it. So that is what we will be recommending to people going forward. Um, I have a lot of puppy parents who will send me information on like some fresh food that they wanna feed their dog. For the most part, I think that's fine as long as the fat content isn't too high and keep in mind miniature schnauzers should always have a fish oil added to their food regardless of what type of food it is how low that fat is they need a little bit of fish oil to not only nurture their coat and their skin but also to protect those fat cells from binding to their blood and causing issues with their liver or pancreas okay um so that's pretty much what i had to say guys i hope this was helpful i know it's kind of been like a lot of back and forth with the food recommendations but formulas change and then we kind of got to figure out where we're going to go with that and that does take time and research and i wanted to make sure that the blue buffalo was working really well for my crew before i went out and i recommended it here on youtube if you guys have any questions feel free to send me a message and we will see you later well she won't she probably won't be here anymore but i will have a good day guys bye